Hello everyone and welcome to this video. Here we will be solving the Codality Frog Jump lesson. It's quite an easy problem in general, however there's always a slight challenge to find the most efficient algorithm. Imagine you have an array of positions and you are provided with the uh, starting position X and the target position Y. And you are also provided by the number of positions the frog will skip with each jump. For example, if x is equal to 1 and y is equal to 2, and d, which is the number of positions to be skipped with each jump, is equal to 2, this means the frog will have to jump 3 times to reach position y. So in this exercise, you are provided a function taking three parameters, starting and target positions, and the jump distance d, capital D, and the function should return the number of jumps required to reach position y. Now, as we are looking to this explanation, there is one easy way to think about a solution using a for loop. Because what we are doing here is basically incrementing a variable x by a step capital D in order to reach a value y. Well, we don't have to believe really the whole frog story, it's just to put those numbers into something more entertaining. So the first solution is presented as a brute algorithm because we will run x from its initial value, taken here equal to 1, to the value of y, incrementing x by d for each iteration. And there must be a counter variable that is incremented by 1 for each iteration and at the end we would have the total number of iterations which is our right answer. I mean if you write your function in Codility following this method you will get a hundred percent of correctness however it's not the most efficient way to do this because if the difference between x and y is relatively large then the program will take more time to loop from x to y. Therefore, we could theoretically say that the computing time changes proportionally to the absolute distance between the two positions. A more efficient way to do this is by considering the distance between the uh, two positions, x and y. I called it small d here. And dividing this distance by the distance covered in one jump, the capital D. The reason this is an efficient solution is because you are not going through all the positions separating x and y using a for loop. So in this case you have a straight answer just by dividing two values and therefore your computing time is independent from the separation distance between x and y. In other words, your program will always use the same computing time to provide an answer. However, there's a trap to consider with this method and it's better shown in numbers. Let's take um, d, the distance to cover, equal to 6, and 4 is the capital D. Dividing 6 by 4 as integers will lead to 1 as a result, because in C++, when you divide an integer by another integer, you get an integer value. So for this reason, we have to add one more step. In this case, if you take uh, the value as is from x, you wouldn't reach y. So for this reason, we have to add an additional step to our result only in the case where d over d doesn't provide the correct number. And this can be tested by multiplying the calculated number of uh, jumps by the capital D, the distance covered by one jump, and checking if this distance starting from x will exceed the distance y. If not, we have to add our additional jump. In C++, the solution is the following. The function is provided three parameters, x, y, and d, and the number of jumps is calculated by dividing the distance between y and x by the jump distance, capital D. And if x plus the distance covered by all the jumps, v times d, is strictly less then y, we return v plus 1. In this case, we use our additional jump. Otherwise, we simply return v and it should be enough to reach y. In Python, we start almost like in C++. However, to ensure an integer division, we apply the floor division operator, what you can see here. 
otherwise if we use the normal division python will transform v into a float and we will have fractions of jumps remember that v here represents the number of jumps so it must stay an integer and then we test if x plus v times d higher or equal than y in this case we return v if not we will return v with an additional jump v plus one that's it for now hope you liked it and see you next time